Learning scales is a really important part of becoming a great lead guitar player. When you first start out learning scales, you more than likely learn the pentatonic scale, and that is a really good thing because you're going to be using that scale for the rest of your guitar playing days. Beginners to pros all can make a living off that pentatonic scale. So once you've got the pentatonic scale sorted, where to from there? Next up is the major scale. Hi there, I'm Owen Vickers from Guitar Mastery Method. We have helped hundreds of thousands of guitar players just like you all around the world to really improve their guitar playing. Why is learning the major scale so important for our guitar playing? The major scale is the foundation that all the other scales come from. When you start to learn things like the modes, you'll find that knowing the major scale makes learning the modes so much easier and removes so much of the mystery that can surround them. In fact, the major scale itself is a mode, it's called the Ionian mode, but we'll get to that in a future lesson. Today we are going to learn the major scale in the key of A, or starting on the root note of A. Don't worry, later on in the lesson I'm going to explain to you how you can take the scale and play it in any key. Now, the major scale is a seven note scale, which means it's a diatonic scale, which is the name that we give to a seven note scale. When we play the scale, up and down the neck as we will do shortly, we play those seven notes and then we repeat those seven notes over again until we run out of fretboard. There's a formula for how the major scale is constructed. But first we get a little bit of terminology out of the way. A whole step on the guitar is a space of two frets. So that's a whole step. A half step is a space of one fret on the guitar. Half step. So half step, whole step. So, in knowing that, here's the formula to create a major scale. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Let's play that on just one string. We'll start here on the note A, which is the fifth fret of the low E string. As I said, we're going to start off by learning this in the key of A or with the root note of A, and then later on I'll show you how to move it around. So our first note will be A, the fifth fret. Now, what was the first step? A whole. So a whole is two frets. So we go from the root note of A, we go up two frets. That's our first interval, is a whole step. We then go up another whole step or two frets. So if we're talking fret numbers, we start off on the fifth fret. We go up a whole fret or two frets to seven. And then two frets or a whole step to the ninth fret. So we had whole, whole, half. So a half, one fret, which takes us to the tenth fret on the low E string. Root note, whole, whole, half, Whole to the 12th fret, whole to the 14th, whole to the 16th fret, and then a half back to the root note, which is A, which is here at the 15th fret of the low E string. So that's a really good way to see the intervals all sitting next to each other on one string, but not the most efficient way to be playing a scale or a solo. Might work, but there's easier ways to do it. And to do this, we take those same notes and those same intervals, and we put them vertically across the guitar. Let me show you the A major scale across all six strings. So 
So that was the same intervals, the same notes, repeated across all six strings. Much easier to play, especially if you're soloing, than trying to play the entire scale on every single string. Let me just take you through slowly what the notes are that I played then. We start off on the fifth fret, the low E string, which is the note A, which is our root note. We then go up to the seventh fret, our whole step. Now we need to go up a whole step from there. So when we're doing it on one string, we went up to this note at the ninth fret. This note here at the fourth fret on the A string is exactly the same note. stretch. So we're taking that same interval, just playing it on the next string down so that we're playing the entire scale within the space of four frets, which fits very well under our fingers. So low E string, fifth, seventh, fourth fret on the A string. Our next part of the formula, whole, whole, half. So a half step, one fret. We go to the fifth fret on the A string. We then play another whole step, which takes us to the seventh fret on the A string. The next note is the fourth fret on the D string. And that's a whole step. So it's the same note as that, which is two frets. What was next? Another whole step. That's right. So two frets up takes us to the 6th fret of the D string. And then it was a half step, which takes us back to the A root note. So that's an octave away from the first note we played. So we've played our seven notes, and we're starting again. The next note, coming down onto the G, is at the 4th fret. Then play 6th fret on the G, 7th fret on the G. We then go to the B string, 5th fret, 7th fret. Up on the high E string, we play the 4th fret. And then we finish off the scale back at the root note of A, two octaves above where we started, at the 5th fret. Let me just play that through slowly one more time. Anytime you play these scales, always good to play them in both directions, both ascending and descending. So let's come back down the other way. So, as I mentioned, we played seven notes and repeated them. Let me just break them into sections so you can hear those seven notes repeating. So that's our first seven notes, and then we're back to that root note, which is the one note. From there, we play those seven notes again. And then add in that root note at the top. So I'll just play those two with a little break in between, just to, for your ear to acclimatize. Now that we know the scale, what can we do with it? When you play scales, they really have two functions. One is as an exercise or a learning tool. It'll build your fingers up, get your coordination going, and just get into your brain what the correct notes are to be playing when you're playing a solo. And then scales are very, very useful for playing solos, especially if you're improvising or if you're writing a solo, knowing the scales, the shapes, the patterns, where the notes are, and what the notes are for the chords that you're playing is going to make things so much easier. So first off, take this as an exercise. What we're going to do is play the scale down and then up 
twice without stopping. All right, here we go. When you learn any new scale, and as you build up your scale knowledge, this is the sort of thing that you're going to be doing a lot of. Just playing those scales up and down, just to get your muscle memory kicking in. You'll find that eventually when you play them enough, you can be going off and watching some TV, and your fingers will just be sitting there playing the scales on the guitar, almost magically. Not quite how it works, but once you get that muscle memory going, you'll find that your fingers will just know where to go when you need them to. So what do we do apart from just playing up and down scales, which can get a little bit boring after a while, especially if you're trying to jam along to someone and they hit an A chord and you're like, have I got something for you? Might not get asked back to that particular jam session. So how do we take scales and make them into music? When we know what the scale shape is and where our fingers should be going, all we do is we just take little sections of that scale and you can either jump around randomly between the notes or string it together like I did in that little improvisation example there, playing a couple of notes which are out of that scale. And then we can just sit on certain notes which we know are in those scales and patterns. then do some ascending or descending runs always sound very cool so that little example that I gave there is actually a really cool little exercise that you can do to start building up your improvisation skills now we know that we're playing this over an A chord so Strum an A chord, and then that'll sink into your brain, and then just jump around that scale, just play a couple of notes out of it, sit on a couple of notes, go back and play the chord again. So that's a really cool way just to get the tonality of that chord, nice major chord, this happy sounding A major chord, and then just playing those notes over it and referring back to that chord, it's really going to sink into your brain that you're playing a major scale. It's just going to sound exactly what a major scale should sound like, which is a nice happy sound. So. We've got this pattern sitting in just four frets going up and down the neck. Is there any other ways we can play it? Of course there is. The way that I play the major scale most of the time is what's called a three note per string scale, which is exactly as the name suggests, you're playing three notes out of that scale on every single string. Why would we do that? Well, it just makes picking, if you're using alternate picking, which is down up picking, just seems to flow much easier if you play the same number of notes on each string. Let me play the three note per string A major scale and then I'll show you all the notes that I played. Let me just show you what I played there. So we start off at the fifth fret 
of the low E string, that's the note A. We then play that whole step to the seventh fret, whole step to the ninth fret. Next up is a half step. So we're playing the fifth fret on the A string, whole step, seventh fret on the A string, whole step, ninth fret on the A string. We now need to go another whole step, so that means going up to the sixth fret on the D string, and then a half step to finish it off to the seventh fret of the D string. And then of course, we repeat those seven notes. So we're here at the seventh fret on the D string, we now go ninth fret on the D string, sixth fret on the G, seventh, ninth on the G, then come up to the seventh fret on the B string, ninth fret on the B, tenth fret on the B, seventh on the high E, ninth on the high E, and finish it off at the 10th fret of the high E string. Now this pattern is super easy to remember because we're playing three different patterns just repeating. So the first pattern was, so we've got two frets, two frets, on the low E string, same again on the A string, two frets, two frets. We then have our second pattern on the D string, which is one fret, two frets. And that repeats on the G. We then have our third pattern that we play twice, which is two frets, one fret, two frets, one fret. So just three simple patterns repeating across two strings each. Let me just play that scale one more time for you and we're going to zoom in on my picking hand and you'll just see how efficient the movement is when you play three notes per string. Earlier I said that I was going to show you how you can take this A scale or this pattern that we've been playing and play it in any key. The trick to this is to take exactly the same pattern that you've learnt, that you've already got your fingers playing, your brain's all fully okay with how it goes, and just changing the root note or the first note that you play. Let's go back to that 4 fret spanning vertical pattern that we used for the A major scale starting at the 5th fret. Now our first note is A. If we wanted to play it, let's randomly pick a note, let's go C. This is where knowing the notes of the low E string is so very important and in the description box down below I'll put a link to an Octaves guitar lesson which shows you how to learn the best possible way of all the notes on the low E string, because this is really going to come in handy learning scales and also if you're learning bar chords. So that note A we were playing, now we want to play in C, well we know that the note C is right here at the 8th fret on the low E string. All we need to do is play exactly that same pattern and we're playing a C major scale. Exactly the same theory works for the three note per string. A three note per string. We just move that up and start it on the C note. Same pattern. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson on the major scale. In an upcoming lesson, I'll show you how you can take this major scale and learn all the modes just from knowing this one scale. Please 
do click the subscribe button down below, hit the notification bell icon, and you'll find out when lessons just like that come out. In the description box down below, I'll put a link to a practice session cheat sheet. This will show you exactly what you need to be practicing every time you pick up your guitar to get the most out of your practice sessions. See you in the next lesson.